favorite uh, rec recommendations for deer during the summer is certainly soybeans. Because if you give deer a choice, I don't think there's anything they prefer more than soybean. However, there are a lot of situations when I go on a property and I don't recommend soybean. Even though that's one of the most preferred forages, if they have a really high deer density or they don't have the ability to plant a large acreage of soybean, that's not gonna be a good option for them. If you've got an acre, they're gonna probably wipe it out unless you've got a low deer density. Personally, I would never on my own property plant a forage plot less than two or three acres for soybean. I just wouldn't do it because I know what's gonna happen on most properties. But if I can plant a large acreage and I can control my deer density through doe harvest, then I love soybean because from May, especially June, July, August, it is pumping out high quality forage and lots of it, uh, you know, close to 30% crude protein. Uh, and it's at a time of the year when nutrition needs are exceptionally high in white-tailed deer. During the lactation period when does are, are nursing fawns, highest nutri nutritional demand of the year for a doe, and during antler production, highest nutritional period of the year for bucks. So it's a great forage for the summertime. You can plant them in the fall. Um, I've not seen many plots be very successful with it though. They usually get grazed out or killed out by winter. Cowpeas are almost as good as soybeans on deer preference. Um, and one nice thing about cowpeas is they're slightly more drought tolerant and they're slightly more grazing tolerant. So I have seen folks that were having marginal success with soybeans switch to cowpeas and they did pretty well. So that's another thing to consider. And especially as we moved into Western Oklahoma, I'd be recommending cowpeas more than I would soybeans for, that, for, for both of those reasons, but especially the, the drought tolerance. And what I would add uh, with the soybeans and the cowpeas, which are right next to each other here, these were the two plots that the deer loved the most. Uh, everything was planted the same day. Actually, this was planted the second day. But it all came up about the same time, and they were hammering this thing almost to the ground. So, and sometimes it didn't really show which one they preferred. Sometimes they'd be going after the soybeans real heavy. Sometimes they'd be going after the, uh, the, the cowpeas real heavy. So you could really plant either one of them and, and probably do just as well, you know? And this is a good place to talk about what we think is a failed plot. You know, if you put soybeans in here and you come out here in the spring, you might be really frustrated with what you see. But rather than thinking about what you planted and don't have, look at what you got. There's a lot of clover that's reseeded in here. There's a lot of this hop clover again. I mean, this is outstanding for wild turkey and pretty good for deer. And also there's mare's tail in here, right here, which has almost no food value, but in another month, it's gonna be this tall. A lot of people hate it. They go out to their field and like, oh, I need to mow that. If you're managing for turkey, that is the worst thing you could do because this thing has the best structure you could ever hope for for turkey poults. It keeps them cool in the hot sun and it keeps them protected and they will forage in the understory for grasshoppers. Mare's tail is one of the best turkey plants we have even though they do, do not eat it whatsoever. It provides cover. So there's a lot of great stuff in this. I mean, if I had a food plot look like this, I, I'd say great. I mean, it's, it's almost as good as what I was trying to grow. Oh, and another native here, toad flax. Uh, this is one of the most common plants I find in turkey crops in April and May when I shoot them. They love toad flax and you get it for free. All you need is a little ground disturbance every now and then. There's not much of it out here. Sometimes you'll see areas that's just solid purple with this stuff and I've seen people go out and spray it it's a great plant and it's not competing with anything else. It'll be finished in another two weeks and you'll never even know it was there. Rye is another cereal grain, not to be confused with perennial rye grass. Those are two different things. And I saw some rye, oh, right here. Not a desirable plant. Rye grass, perennial rye grass, very invasive, forms monocultures if it's not managed. Uh, deer hardly use it. Turkey will eat the seed heads a little bit, but it is not a desirable plant. And that is different than rye, the cereal grain rye. 
Uh, rye is a good one. I mentioned earlier oats are a little bit more preferred over wheat. Well, wheat is a little bit more preferred over rye, but the difference is pretty negligible. Um, and unless you give deer the option in the same field, you'd never know it. So if rye works better where you live, if it's more suited for the climate, then rye works great. Rye does have slightly different maturity rate, uh, rate most of the varieties, yeah. a little earlier than wheat. So it might give you a little bit better early grazing than wheat would. And for that reason, sometimes people will plant mixtures of both rye and wheat in the same plot. That's usually why they're doing that, is it'll give you a week or two bump on the front end of, of forage potential. Another thing to think about if you're planting any of these cereal grains that have ons, and everybody know what I'm talking about when I say on, A-W-N, you hear people say bearded wheat. They're talking about these long ons on the seed. If, and you have fewer variety options if you, if you go this route, but if you have a variety available to you that is onless or beardless, then I would go with that because deer generally do not eat seed heads of bearded cereal grains. They will absolutely eat the seed head from a beardless or onless seed, all right? Uh, so I like to plant the beardless because it gives me a little bit more deer forage. Turkey, they don't care. They'll pick the on off and they'll eat the seed as with most game birds. But deer are picky because this is a deterrent to grazing animals. They don't like that and they're sticking in the roof of their mouth. But Brad, you pointed out last, last fall, I believe, that not only are there fewer varieties, but some of the disease resistance may not be in some of these onless varieties. They're working on some new beardless varieties. Um, one of the things you worry about with uh, wheat in general is just diseases. Um, you, don't, you want them to be as healthy as they can be for as long as possible to provide as much forage for those deer as you can. Um, the problem is, is that some of these varieties that you're going to see in a mix, it's going to be VNS, variety not stated. Uh, and so you have no idea what kind of wheat. It could be a soft wheat. It could be wheat that, it could be a spring wheat for all you know. Um, most likely you're going to get some kind of a winter wheat, but you have no idea what kind of winter wheat. It could be bin run. It could be whatever was in uh, the co-op's bin when, when they decided they needed some winter wheat. Um, and so it may or may not be uh, an improved variety that you're going to want for your property um, in your area. So uh, those are things to consider. Um, some varieties that are being released right now don't have very good disease resistance. The expectation is that the farmer is going to spray them heavily. Uh, because they have all this top-end yield product yield potential uh, But what a if you want a food plot you want a variety that gets good yields But at the same time is going to have the disease resistance So you're not having to spray it because you're not going to spray fungicide on your on your food plot um, And that's the expectation with some of these wheat varieties that are being released And so you want to go after those wheat varieties that have really good disease resistance and actually the next plot we have here is Smith's gold um, that is a relatively new OSU release that I chose specifically because of its disease resistance and something that should do well when it's not being grazed to the ground and marked by deer. So uh, it does have very good disease resi resistance. It has an on to it though. So the deer aren't going to like that, that seed head very much. If you care more about than just deer, like if you wanted a dove field, wheat can be a good option for you. Not only do you, or not just wheat, but any of the cereal grains. Not only do you get the forage production during the fall and winter and spring, but if you'll let it go to seed and stay fallow all summer, and then come in the field, say, first of August, and mow half that field, and then about a week later, burn that half, and then come in right before dove season and mow the other half and burn that half, you're talking about some tremendous and cheap dove fields. I mean, that is a great way to do it. Now, you're not going to attract a ton of doves on one acre food plot. Although, if it's just going to be you and one other person hunting, it might be good enough. But certainly, when you're getting up to a three or a five acre food plot, you can put several shooters on that. And so, you can have dual purpose. 
the deer forage in the winter and the dove field the following fall. But a lot of people, and I see this all the time, they'll plant these plots and they'll come in and mow them down in June, their wheat plot, with no intention of growing anything in that plot until the following September. Well, if I was gonna do that, I'd let it stay fallow because you can get a lot of wildlife use through the, through the summer and early fall before you have to replant again for the winter. Does that make sense? Okay, so you've heard me talk about slightly different preferences on these cereal grains with oats being at the top, wheat being a little bit lower, rye being a little bit lower, and triticale is gonna be right in there with wheat and rye, it's just a hybrid. And then barley, it's down on the ground. I mean, deer generally do not use barley unless they are just starving. It is very low preference. I don't know why, but that's, that's just what you see is deer do not generally use barley very much. So I would never recommend planting that one over another cereal grain. And you said you had something, an issue here? Yeah, there was a problem with our barley stri uh, strips. We got one here and we got one on the end. Um, probably won't touch that one because they're pretty much the same. When we came in and looked at this two months ago to see whether or not we wanted to do this, there were two stripes, two stripes in this field that were kind of a pale yellow, kind of a pale green. And it was barley. It did not, for whatever reason, it did not like the conditions that we had over the winter. And so every single plant, it wasn't even, a, I, I don't think it was disease, I think it was cold damage, and it turned yellow. Um, it didn't really recover all that well. And so it didn't even really make a very good stand anyway. So certain, not only did the deer not like it, apparently barley doesn't really like Oklahoma either. So um, certainly would not recommend it. Um, I put it in here solely for comparison, you know. Um, and what's one really interesting thing is that I put barley on the edge there on purpose because I wanted to see what kind of edge effect you'd get. Are the deer actually gonna eat that? Even because it's on the edge there, just coming out of the forest where it's a little bit protected, uh, and they did. They actually nibbled on it a little bit. Um, but at the same time, out in an open field like this, they ain't gonna touch this.